Love. Adore. Crave. Color Elixir. The first creamy lip lacquer from Maybelline New York. Sex sells. We know this, but how? Look no further than classical conditioning. First, advertisers rely on a naturally occurring response. This models dilated pupils, the unconditioned stimulus, links to lust and sex drive, the unconditioned response. Then the first phase of classical conditioning begins, acquisition. Consistently and repeatedly, the ad pairs the neutral stimulus, the product Maybelline Color Elixir, with variations of the unconditioned stimuli. Suggestive words, <laughs> close-ups of the lips, and real images of people who look uh, DTF. These all produce the same unconditioned response, lust. Then the ad removes the unconditioned stimuli of the images, leaving only the previously neutral but now conditioned stimulus, the lip gloss. Through classical conditioning, this now produces the conditioned response, lust, without being paired with the unconditioned stimuli. The end card of the ad Maybe it's Maybelline. produces both stimulus generalization and discrimination. Having the brand name at the end without the product name makes the viewer likely to associate lust with all Maybelline products. Since the viewer is, though, associating Maybelline with lust, they're also unlikely to feel the same lust when viewing other brands' makeup products. After the consumer buys the product and repeatedly walks into stores and sees the product without images that produce lust, the association falls into extinction, meaning the link between the conditioned stimuli and their conditioned response weakens. But a year down the road, when Maybelline wants to sell a new product, spontaneous recovery comes into play. Upon seeing a similar ad, the consumer once again associates Maybelline with lust. Maybe it's Maybelline.